On today's Man of the Apes, Richard learns how to use Max because he's a PC guy at work. Hello and welcome to Men of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies one minute at a time. I'm Todd, I've got Sean, yep. and the Mac anointed Richard. Happy Wednesday. Hey everybody. We are on to Minute, minute eight. 8. Why don't we stop real quick and let's ask everybody right off the top. If you are listening to us, we know that you found us on your favorite app for listening to podcasts, do us a favor and rate us. And I'm not going to ask you to rate us a five star. That's up to you. I'm not going to be so disingenuous to say you have to do something. But every time you rate us, it shares it out there. It hits the algorithm. It helps us find more people. We're doing actually pretty well on the people we find, but we sure would love it if you would take the time to rate us on your favorite app. Please and thank you. Sean, tell us what's going on with this minute. All right. In minute eight, we have a soldier saying, oh, me too, me too, and ends with Greg walking towards the cage with oranges. All right. Let's take a listen to minute eight. Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Oh, me too, me too. We can't let a lot of monkey leave their messes on the floor, huh? Have they been fed? Raw steak or something? Uh, the zoo tells me that chimpanzees, like all apes, are vegetarians, sir. They suggested oranges. Good God. What's the matter, Corporal? Oh, well, excuse me, I didn't mean to disturb you while you're dressing. What the hell am I saying? They're pretending to dress, sir. What do you mean, pretending? They are dressing. Now, where did they get those clothes? They brought them with them, sir. What? In that suitcase. Suitcase? Uh, Greg, maybe uh, you should give them uh, their oranges. All right, that's minute eight. We've got a planet worth of humans and three intelligent apes. All right, so we see our, what is about to be, now we have a triumvirate of humans in this coming scene we're, yeah. we're, as soon as we get there. But we, we start with our two military leaders strolling along and walking inside. And we start with what is supposed to be, I guess, interpreted as a joke. Right? <laughs> Me it's too. Scripted. Can't have a lot of monkeys making messes on the floor. Um, uh, have they been fed anything like raw steak or something? The zoo tells me the chimpanzees, like all apes, are vegetarian, sir. Good God. <laughs> they suggested oranges. And the colonel's like, good God. And it was this moment where I was like, I was like, there was a, uh, cut to, they have like a steak buffet set up there for all the shit. <laughs> it was, it was a very, okay, I'll be honest. I, I couldn't tell from this play from the way the colonel read the line and maybe the the audience that listened to the clip needs to see the visuals well to understand i could not tell if the colonel was upset because he discovered that monkeys are vegetarians and don't eat meat or if the colonel was upset because he realizes we're pandering to these monkeys i agree with you it's not real clear where that character motivation is coming from however what's clear is that he's reacting accordingly now, I don't know what his, his motivations are, but what I like is everything we missed before. You told me something, and I at least have a counter to it. I have something. People are saying things. I, I at least, it, it didn't hit, it didn't really bother me why he was doing it. I just, I think I'm going to be such a slut to this movie actually having a semblance of intelligence about the way its characters handle themselves that I'm going to, I'm going to be the one making excuses this time going, nope, nope, they're fine. They're fine. I don't need to know his motivations. <laughs> this, this, is, this is probably the second instance, the first one being kind of the uh, salute uh, and the guffaw to this one with him saying, good God, responding to the oranges that I'm spo that I'm kind of led in the sense I think I'm supposed to be laughing at these moments. I think you are. I think these are supposed to be comedy moments. And we, we already talked comedy about comedy in quotes. We talked about how informal the military brass already was. And now we're in this kind of like, I've got oranges in a bag and I'm, you know, it's just, it is meant to be funny. It's got that yeah. kind of I dream a genie military uh, weight to it where, yeah, they're yeah. in the air force, but everything's jokey. Yeah. 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 This is, I'm supposed to ha I feel good about this movie versus the last movie. 
in which I walked out completely and totally depressed, <laughs> depressed and baffled as to what the characters were thinking while they were doing it. Do you think that's, I mean, do you think that's the, the, the intent of Dane when he came into this movie initially, at least to start off the tone, we saw the calming waters. We now have something that might be interpreted as a little bit of a comedy to kind of, to bring some lightness to what was otherwise a very be. dour ending, a very intentional to try and do something humorous with it. So obviously when he gets that, that memo from Arthur B. Jacobs, that apes live sequel necessary. I'm sure he, he, you know, had, was given a little time to come up with an idea for a story, but I'm sure he pitched at least one or two versions of something. Here's what I think. And I can't help but think he, he thought, okay, the ones that survive are Cornelius and Zero. We're going to make this a love story between the two of them because let's really be honest. The heart of the previous two movies was Zero and Cornelius is yeah. really them. They right. are the heart. They are the, the humanity, even though we have Taylor, they are the true human nature of it. We, and, we stress was mostly in them. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think he probably pitched it like this. And I think what he probably, I, I can't help but think he thought it's kind of a romantic comedy with eight makeup. Yeah. And that's kind of how he pitched it. And so the people around them are silly and buffoons and all this kind of thing. Well, you, you, you don't think there's also a level to which is like, uh, we killed everybody else. Well, I think that's it too. Lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> I do. I do think that's it. You know, I think we, we took last time so hard. Number one, we removed the heart of our film. And we took Zero and Cornelius by and large out of the movie. Let's yep. put them back in front and center. And let's also just have fun with them instead of making it so serious. Because the film does have eventual weight to it. It's just not now at all. The the uh, uh, direction for this moment is after the two, uh, he says the good God. And they pause for a second. It's at 721 uh, where they enter the guardhouse. And it said, a guardhouse whose door is unlocked by an obviously shaken Marine. Uh, uh, MP and the Colonel a, a replies, what's the matter corporal? So when the Colonel actually walked in and said, what's the matter corporal? I didn't get the sense that the Marine was shaken. I, no, he was kind of, they're, do, they're doing the shot from uh, the other side of the bars looking through, through to see that. And so I wasn't really able to see the military, uh, police being upset or unusual or odd. Just the, what's the matter corporal? You know, yeah. I, I didn't see that moment. I'm sorry. I got so caught in the moment of watching that on Amazon that there's also a boom mic uh, shadow, shadow inserts itself on the wall and then they pull it back out Somebody said, Shit. right around the 730 mark. It's just like there. But um, I think it's uh, interesting that Zira is modest when the general shows up, but obviously they've all been changing in front of the guards and had no problem with it. Well, I, so that you is a good point, up, yeah. You picked up on the modesty, which it hit me that modesty is an odd thing to have her exhibit when you're trying to show that you don't have intelligence. Modesty at least exhibits that you have the conscious nature that I need to protect myself. Well, if they're trying to not show how intelligent they are, future minutes is going to kind of screw that. Yeah, and, and I just think to me this is one of the first examples of them so, showing something that is... Not animal-like, it's human. Yeah, it's very human reaction to i'm naked please don't look at me yeah so 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 after after he asked the after they enter the room and he says what's the matter corporal we then kind of have a, a shot uh a kind of a pan if you will or a cut to the side and we see our three apes now putting on familiar chimpanzee yeah, garbs right the the listening audience couldn't actually see that visual but they're now kind of dressing and zero is kind of pulling outfit, yeah, yeah and zero is kind of pulling her blouse robe together right and kind of gives that modesty turning her guys, back to it yeah, yeah oh the car somebody's here people yeah. are looking at me and um the the colonel is now smiling and that's when he says excuse me i didn't mean to disturb you like he'd caught a woman dressing yeah which if that's played in the moment of comedy oh, right. excuse me i didn't mean to wait you know and if it stopped there because he should catch himself saying hang on you're an ape why am i worrying about your modesty but then within minutes, she shows another sign of intelligence when he begins talking about the suitcase and she reaches and grabs for it. So she understands the term suitcase. There are many times in this already, and this may be intentional by Dane, that they cannot contain. It just takes a while for the humans to catch on to their intelligence. Well, I think it's also interesting that the humans um, are faster on the uptake on the fact that these apes are smart than the apes were with Taylor. True. Fair, yeah. Taylor, they would say, oh, he's just trying to mimic everything. And they're going, wait, these apes are getting dressed. And it's not mimicry. They're actually right. doing things on their own. Right. I mean, the aide says to him in response to him, they're pretending to dress. What are you pretending? They are dressing. Yeah. Where'd, those, where'd they get those clothes? And that's when the MP says, they brought them with them, sir, in a suitcase. In a suitcase. 
And then it is just, I'll be honest, I had to go back and rewatch the prior minute to see the suitcase being led in by the military by priest. Because yeah, otherwise, that was this is the first time that it's brought to my attention. And Zira very intentionally picks, picks it, it up, up, walks it over, and puts places it, it on the cot. Like, yeah. I've got a suitcase, and this is where my clothes came from. Yeah, she's very protective of it at first. Like, don't you take my suitcase from me. And it is odd, though, that she walks to that cot. I do think that's an interesting method of shooting that, where we would have before, in the previous films, just had some massive wide shot, and it would have played out. The camera actually pans with her, and we lose her behind a column. Mm -hmm. And she goes to the bars, where the bars are, even at that angle, barely showing her face. That's a much more interesting image than we've seen before of people in bars because that the closer the bars come together through the lens the more she looks like she's contained trapped and i thought that i found that very interesting at that very moment that zira who's so intelligent so fiery she really feels the need to protect what she has and and i thought that was a smart use of the imagery with the cage to let it close down on her i like that thank you i like that I, I do think that these moments and the, the way the back and forth is done, the way the movements are done, that the director was definitely trying to accentuate a little bit of the comedic aspect of that. Absolutely. Uh, I think without question, he's definitely got the pacing here and, and revealing the fact that it's going to be funny going forward. There were, and, and we've, we've, we've flipped the script in terms of what's expected in, in the first film. There was the horror of what would happen to humans in the situation. And now we've flipped it and it is the animals almost, have gone back to being animals, almost, almost comedic. Oh, and that, okay, then let's talk again about how Dane pitches the story. Does he pitch it to them when he comes up with the concept of them going back? It's it's a flip of Planet of the Apes. It's exactly a flip. It's Planet of the Humans. Yeah, it and it literally, it whether it be secret or escape from the Planet of the Apes, it really should be return to the Planet of the Humans or something like that. Yeah. Because this is about, it's a fish out of water story again. It's just now the apes are in the place of Taylor. Mm-hmm. Well, I think... Is it? I don't know if it's the next minute or the minute after that. We're actually going to be able to get more of the parallels mm -hmm. with what's about to happen with with these characters. Yeah, uh, it does end with the with the aide kind of approaching the the gate with the bag, mm -hmm. right? Which we can assume are the oranges that were mentioned earlier. I guess. Yeah. Well, that's it the, for me. Yeah, it's not a super action packed minute, but there's a lot of intrigue as far as them feeling each other out, at least. Correct. Or up one or the other, the, each other out or up. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I'm, what I'm happy at this point is that the, the the military officers are not at this point being hostile to them. I agree with that. There's no there's no sense of I don't have a sense of uh, outside of Zira's hesitation to the entire situation and their kind of trepidation in terms of what's going on. I don't have a sense that they're in danger. I do think if this film were made today, that you would have that. You would not have the comedic sweetness essentially that this holds. It would be. Hustling them in, guns pointing at them, them Correct. scared and cowering to the sides. Today's modern storytelling would have put them in a, in a more precarious situation. Yeah, I mean, you might have been able to find humor within that situation, but it wouldn't have been such a broad humor to where the people are almost laughing at the the absurdity of what's happening. All right. Sounds like it. I, I look over and Sean's looking at my dog, so that tells me yeah. he's ready to move on the next minute. All right, so that's minute eight in the books. We will be back tomorrow with minute nine, yes, and I will works. I will get that right without having having to ask. It's been so long since we've done these. I try to stay on top of my notes. Man, this <laughs> has been hard getting back in the the groove back of in it. The swing. So I'm gonna say I'm not gonna have any more surgery in between episodes. You guys can't have anything like that either. And we're no just more gonna good keep meds, Todd. No, the the good meds completely <laughs> destroyed my brain. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with another minute. Until then, everyone have a great day. Bye.